In this session, I will explain one of the important relative valuation techniques price to earnings. Price to earnings or PE ratio is widely used for valuing a company stock. It is calculated as share price divided by earnings per share. Recall from last session, in relative valuation the objective is to value an asset based upon how similar assets are currently priced by the market. This is like a prospective house buyer deciding how much to pay for the house by looking at prices paid for similar houses in the neighborhood. There are two ways you can leverage PE from relative valuation perspective. You can value a business by comparing PE ratio to its own historical PE. For historic multiple to be relevant to the present, you should consider similar underlying value of drivers like business fundamentals, interest rates, inflation, and so on. Considering business fundamentals are intact, stock can be considered cheap when it's trading below historical PE multiple. Another way is to compare PE ratio of similar companies. The companies should be similar in terms of business model, industry, market capitalization and future expected growth. Stock can be considered as cheap when it's trading at low PE compared to its competitors. You should use relative valuation with great deal of caution and make sure you are comparing very similar businesses and similar underlying drivers of value. Price to earnings ratio is calculated as company's share price divided by earnings per share. Hence, PE ratio can be misleading due to dependency on daily stock price fluctuations and unusual changes in earning due to temporary event. The unusually high earnings can make PE of the stock low, although the stock price is close to all-time high. Let's get into details of few thumb rules while looking at PE as valuation metric. Let's start with unexpected increase in earnings. Company can have unexpected increase in earnings due to various reasons like exceptional quarter, one-time boost in earnings due to non-operating income and so on. This will make PE of the stock look very low. The question you should ask, is this earning sustainable in future or it will revert to mean? Stock is buy at lower PE only if future earnings are sustainable for next several years. Next consideration is changes in stock price. Stock price falls due to temporary event that lowers P-E ratio. This is the best situation that can happen and investors should take advantage of it. Every company goes through ups and downs. If there is an event in the industry or company that drops stock price considerably, you should thoroughly investigate the impact on its future earnings. Stock is buy at lower P.E. if you believe with conviction that the event is temporary and stock will bounce back. Next situation could be P.E. trading below its own historical average. Moreover, it's trading at lower multiple compared to competitors with similar size and business model. Stock is buy if other valuation methods confirms that the business is selling below intrinsic value and long-term prospect is still intact. Lastly when your company expect higher future growth rate, it will trade at rich valuation to reflect future growth in stock price. Please remember stock market is futuristic in nature and higher expected growth rate will demand higher PE. You can patiently wait for certain event to happen in the company or industry that can pull back the prices. Remember, Stock trading at high valuation can fall like a brick if future growth expectations or revenue guidance is not met. You should exhibit caution while buying high growth companies and make sure you do not pay very high price in relation to future earnings potential. In previous slide, I talked about companies with higher growth rate will demand higher PE. However, growth creates value when the company is earning much higher returns on invested capital. In order to understand this concept, let's consider business A and business B generating 1 crore of earnings from 10 crores of capital invested. This translates into 10% return on invested capital. Now, let's consider a situation where business A wants to double its earnings. 
In order to double the earnings, it has to invest additional 10 crore and return on invested capital will be still 10%. Businesses like airline, oil and gas, commodity falls under this category since their earning power mainly come from the tangible assets. On the other side, you have business B which can double its earnings by adding 2 crores providing 17% of return on invested capital. Capital light businesses like software product, cloud services and companies with economies of scale fall under this category. Let's summarize the impact of earning growth and return on invested capital on P-E ratio with this table. You should consider this table only for understanding purpose. This table shows companies expecting high earning growth will demand high P-E. However, companies with high expected earnings growth and high return on invested capital will demand even higher P.E. You should be looking for companies with minimum 8 to 10 percent earnings growth and having minimum 15 percent return on invested capital. Ideally you should expect P.E. ratio of 19 to 25 depending on growth prospect and return on invested capital. You should always remember, Lower is your purchase price and P.E. ratio, the faster it will help to compound your money over longer term. Thank you.